Hi everyone, Dan Julian here, nurse practitioner for Danesthetics Medical, and our clinic is located here in Ottawa, Canada. Today, everyone's favorite lip fillers. I'm going to share with you all of my secrets on how I achieve the best results possible in the safest way using a needle technique. Let's get into it. All right, everyone, so before we begin, we're gonna have to bring in our assistant, Sarah. Say, hey, Sarah. Sarah, fix your hair, we're on camera here. Okay, don't pay attention to Sarah's hair. Let's pay attention to her facial artery that branches off from the modiolus to the inferior and superior labial arteries. And these are the arteries that I'm always paying attention to. And before I do any type of injection, I'm always making sure that not only do I understand where the location of these arteries are, but also the depth. Essentially, I need to understand two things of the depth. First of all, we have a wet dry border of the lip. So right here, this is the dry part of your lip, and then right underneath, this is where it gets wet. The cross between the two right here, this is the wet dry border. The artery always runs in the wet portion. So step number two for safety is at that wet dry junction that I was telling you about, you're gonna to wanna to flip the lip up, and you're gonna to wanna to look underneath here to see if you can see any pulsating arteries. It's pretty rare, but once in a while, you'll get that pulsating artery that's a little bit more superficial. And it's going to be right underneath the wet, dry junction. So it'll be in the wet portion, but you still wanna identify where that is because you're gonna be pretty close there with your needle. And if you do see a pulsing artery there, then don't go that deep. You're gonna be just above it. So the perfect plane when using a needle is the subcutaneous region, not intradermal and not into the muscle either. The way you can identify this is place the needle inside the lip and I want you to push it forward. This is called tenting. And whenever you're doing that, you wanna see a white blanching. If you see the color of the needle, which is gray, you're too superficial. And if you're tenting it forward, you just see the red, you are in the muscle and you're too deep. Take it out, reposition it, see the blanch, you're in perfect position. All right, now for the nitty gritty, this is the good stuff. I'm going to bring in Sarah and I'm gonna tell you guys this pattern I'm using. This is essentially a tenting technique that was invented by Dr. Tom Van Eyck, perfected by Julie Horn, and everyone is basically kind of doing their own version. This is my version of this technique. I often do a lot of cannula work because when it comes down to the lips, the cannulas give me a really nice hydrated natural look, but you can achieve this look as well with a needle. And the benefit of the needle is you kind of get a little bit more version of the lip, and I'm going to show you how to do that without having the ledge. So the first thing you want to identify is the white roll, which is the vermilion border. And that is right here. So whenever I flatten out the lip, you'll see where it gets a little white. And that is the vermilion border. You don't want to place your needle in there and you don't want to inject any filler in there because it will accentuate the border and it's going to basically give everyone the tell that you've had lip filler. And at the same time, it tends to migrate once it's in there and eventually it just doesn't look so nice. So for me, always stay inside the red and all your poking is going to be just underneath that border. All right, now let's get into it. So here we are, this is Sarah, this is my pattern technique. I'm gonna bring her very close here so you can see it. And you'll see the first place I'm gonna start off with is at the Cupid's bow, the peak of the Cupid's bow and I'm inside the vermilion border and I'm going straight down and I'm placing a drop at the base. And then I'm placing a strip all the way up and I do not place an additional drop at the top because if I do that, then I'm going to push on the border and it's going to accentuate it. So I'm a big advocate for placing the drop at the bottom because by doing so, you're going to have a smooth transition from here to here. Often enough, we have a little bit of that beak at the tip of the lip. And I really like whenever everything from here to the lip or that beak, the center part, is completely smooth and flat. And those little drops are really what's going to help you. That drop should be at the wet, dry border, right there. And that's why it's essential for you to make sure you do your little anatomy check before to make sure that there's no arteries there. So now that we understand that, I do Again, three strips right here, right at the cupid's bow to accentuate this area. And then after that, all the way across, I'm just doing these little strips. And with every strip, my insertion point is maybe a millimeter underneath the vermilion border. I go all the way down, I place a drop at the base and then a little mini strip all the way up. These strips are very close together 
and I go all the way to basically the end of the lip. The bottom lip is a little different in the sense that what I'm doing is I'm using the exact same starting point. This is going to be right where the top of the cupid's bow go straight down to make my strip starting here, come all the way out, and I place a little bit uh, extra at the end. Another strip here, another strip here, all connecting in the same place. And then afterwards, I then taper it out because I want that pillow to taper all the way down. I don't want this big bump and then flat. This should be smooth. In order to do that, I'm going to place strips over here, laterally going outwards and just to make sure that it's seamless. At the very end, what I'm going to do is go to the middle and I really want to place just a little extra strip here and here to make sure that it's all connected. Notice that I don't place anything in the middle right here. I want that little break in the lip and this way everything falls down to the middle. It looks extremely soft, extremely natural and everyone's happy. The filler of choice that I typically use whenever I'm doing the lip is going to be like a Restylane Kiss or a Revenesse Ultra Plus or Versa or um, let's say a Stellage M. Those are mid G prime fillers that are designed for lips and they do a great job. Now, if I'm looking for a little bit more pout, I will use a softer filler. And that's going to be, you know, in the Revenesse family, like lips. If it's going to be the Restin family, it'll be like a Refine. And if it's going to be in the Stellage family, it'll be an S. And, those and here's my example of using the cross hatching method. So basically this is the tenting and this is the cross hatching. I'm just going across it now with a thinner filler and that's just going to give a little bit more pout. So thanks for watching guys. Remember the lip is the most technical area on the face to treat well with fillers. So take your time, practice makes perfect. Eventually you'll get there. I appreciate you guys watching the video. Till the next time, take care of yourselves, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Take care.